Around in the front garden we've got a few small celery plants still growing. These are a variety called Golden Self Blanching. There's a variety of silver beet called Ford Hook Giant. And that's where I've also got a uh, got a cola growing wild through here. And lots of it. Got a patch down here. Got a patch over there. These are uh, early Jersey Wakefield cabbage. It's uh, starting to form a head on it. So we might get a cabbage out of that before it gets too hot. This is uh, collard greens, which doesn't form a head. Just pick the leaves of that if you need it. This is a red giant mustard. It's growing well, but it's a little bit too hot for me. But it gets milder when you cook it. This is uh, perpetual spinach, looking a bit sad, needs water. This grows like silver beet, but has a mild spinach flavour. Back behind the mustards, we've got a patch of uh, warrigal greens that's growing well. This is high oxalic acid, so we're probably going to cook that one before we eat it, but it's another green leafy vegetable. Native to Australia. This is a different type of red mustard. Pretty much still slows itself now in the garden. Would have came in a mixed punnet several years ago. And in the middle of the mustard over there, we've got a green goliath broccoli. Not sure we'll get a hell of that before it gets too far. But we could always eat the leaves. A little pot with three uh, cranberry hibiscus plants and a little got of cola in there too, which, which managed to get in there somehow. I have to split them up and divide them. These can be eaten in salads, they have a bit of a lemony flavour. Quite nice. This is my mulberry tree in a pot. I find when it's in a pot it produces uh, fruit. They're smaller fruit, but it produces for most of the months of the year. Every uh, day I pick one or two fruit off it. It won't produce during winter though. Got a bunch of red Russian kale here. It's getting too hot now, so I doubt we'll get many leaves of them, but we got 14 little seedlings in a punnet for a dollar on clearance, so it was worth a shot. These are purple sprouting broccoli, and I, I hope we'll get a head or two off them before it gets too hot. They are perennial capsicum. It's several years old now. It did go yellow, but it's greened up after we gave it a bit of fertilizer. And these are uh, Oregon giant snow peas, and I'm going to show you snap peas. We've got lots of pots of them, but it's, they're getting towards their end of their life. You can see a few twisted pods still on there, but we've got to pick. My uh, main Okinawa spinach plant. It's got the, um, tastes a bit like a fleshy spinach. It's got the vibrant purple underneath and green on top. My mushroom plant tastes a bit like mushroom. Chinese celery. Brazilian spinach. A salty snitch flavour, a little bit tough on the old leaves, but this has a nice flush and new growth because I fertilised it. This is a beetle leaf that's in a cage because the possums originally ate every leaf of it, but it's uh, several months later, it's coming back strong. And hopefully, I'll be able to try it soon. Pigeon peas producing lots of pods at the moment, which we'll harvest when they're dry. This is longevity spinach, it's related to the Okinawa spinach, but it's got more of a green bean flavour. This is a variety of ornamental sweet potato called Blackie. And it doesn't form tubers. We grow that for the leaves to eat. They've got a bit of a spicy taste, which I quite enjoy. And there's a galangal in the back there. Not growing too well, but it's, it's early days. And one of our papaya trees, which has a few, few fruits forming on it, which is great. Around the back, we have some uh, peppermint cuttings. And a few few different types of uh, scented geraniums and a few more scented geraniums, one of the geranium cuttings in that pot there. That's, uh, that's a torch ginger sticking up there, but below it there's a whole heap of uh, geraniums. This flowering types. This is an abu tree in the uh, sapote family. It's been grown from seed, it produces fruit, has sweet caramel tasting flesh, but it's a long way off from producing fruit. Big pot of parsley growing strong in here. There's a uh, pepino melon. Go off this parent plant, but it's uh, that one's suffering from a bit of mite damage, I think. Spots on the leaves. Pepino melon produces a fruit that uh, have the golden coloured skin when ripe, and they've got purple stripes, and they taste a bit like a, uh, a rock melon or cantaloupe. Come in this pot. Got a funny lettuce come up from old seed that I didn't think that it was going to germinate, but it did. And then there's a couple of uh, chili plants that were planted afterwards. They're suffering a bit from over fertilisation, but the uh, lettuce seems to love it. And, uh, this is a uh, reiki onion, which is a Japanese bunching onion. You can eat the bowls, I'm growing it mostly to eat the uh, greens. 
This is a potting radish in here which is grown for the pods. See a little native bee on that flower there. This doesn't form a swollen root instead. The, uh, when the pods get pollinated they uh, fill out and you can eat them raw or cooked. They've got a bit of a radish bite. These ones have got to grow a little bit more. These ones have turned yellow and they're going to fall off because there wasn't all that many pollinators around in late winter to pollinate these. The chives growing strong. A great plant which was a dead stick for the better part of a year. It's now shot back this spring. And there's a little flower head forming so hopefully we'll get some good grapes off of that. Moving around to the uh, side garden. Lots of nasturtiums. A couple of uh, second year eggplants which I cut back probably at the start of winter and they've uh, reshot so hopefully we'll get a few good eggplants off them. My carrot patch, the ones on the right are all seasons. The ones on the left are uh, Paris Market, a little round bowl type. I harvested a bunch of them this morning. These are some of the uh, Paris Market garden carrots that I harvested today. I just ate a few and they're uh, sweet and tender. No woodiness, no bitterness, really nice carrot. Rosemary plants going uh, berserk as always. Get good, good success with rosemaries. A couple of seedlings of a bushing pea. Variety's called uh, sugar ann. Hopefully we'll get a few peas off that. But the heat might kill them. Got a blueberry and flower. And you see some uh, small fruits forming there. So hopefully we'll get lots of blueberries this year. Got quite a few flowers on it. This is a blue flowered salvia and it's one of the best plants for attracting the uh, native blue banded bees which are good buds pollinators of tomato flowers. So that's why we keep that one here. This is our uh, society garlic, this is some flower. This is a type of lima bean called Madagascar. Uh, it's just coming into flower. These are also known as Christmas lima beans. They, uh, they crop well here. This is a dead vine from last year. They died back during winter so we've still got to cut that off. But the uh, new New spring vines growing over the top of it. This is a leek plant that comes up and there's a gladiolin brown onion next to it. We might get a bulb. Bulb off the onion and a few leek shoots. This is a cluster of tomatoes that come up in the compost. We've got these uh, larger round ones which are ripening up but there's also, there's also a few plants in here that are producing uh, little cherry tomatoes as well. This is a snow pea called Yokumo, which I planted late winter. Hopefully we'll get a few pods out of that before it gets too hot for them. It's an Asian variety, so hopefully it'll do a bit better in the heat. This is a swede. We might get a nice root off it, but it might get too hot and kill it. Down here we've got a purple kohlrabi. Don't hold up much hope for that getting a swollen uh, base before, before it gets too hot for it and it dies. Nice little patch of lemon balm in here. I'll be making a uh, lemon tea off it. And back here we've got some snake beans that will grow up this trellis. This is the uh, black seeded variety. Got a couple of big plants of rocket here which are left to go to flower. The little native bees love it. Passion fruit in this pot growing up the trellis and a bunch of uh, bunch of capsicum, capsicum plants which have which have some fruit on them. So uh, West Indian lemongrass in here, which I'm going to have to pull out of there and probably plant there. Divide it up a bit, cut off the dead foliage. This is my uh, vanilla plant growing in the shade here. And it's, um, it's growing its way up into, the, uh, up into the roof. So I'll have to uh, trim that back and uh, take cuttings of it soon. So this walking into the undercover area where I've got all my uh, cuttings and indoor plants. Down here we have a little pot of Gotu Cola. I only got planted a couple of days ago, so it's still getting established. Next to it, got some native violets. These also have edible leaves and flowers as well. And a little pot of uh, Comelina, the native uh, Wandering Dew, which has uh, pretty blue flowers and edible leaves also. There's a celery in a pot, which is just planted from uh, the uh, stub of one we brought from the store. So we should be able to get a few good stalks out of that once it grows a bit bigger. And a little macadamia in a pot. This is uh, longevity spinach grown from cuttings. It's the one that's green above and green below. Got a bit of a green bean taste. 
This is a this is a related species. This is Okinawa spinach. You can tell it's got green above and it's got purple below, and it and it's got more of a spinachy taste. It doesn't have the uh, green beaniness that the other one does. This one's a little mushroom plant cutting. Can also be eaten as a leafy green. Tastes a little bit like mushrooms. This is some cuttings of uh, curry herb. It's got a uh, scent and flavour, a bit like uh, not authentic Indian curry mixes, but a bit like the. Uh, the sort of English curry mixes you can buy pre-mixed. This one's Brazilian or Sochu spinach. It's got a uh, salty spinach flavour. The older leaves can be a bit tough but these uh, these new fresh leaves are nice and tender and delicious. There's some um, uh, rosemary cuttings growing from the tall upright plants in the side garden. Coming along well. These are uh, cuttings of the blue salvia that's in flower in the side garden. Hello Misha. Some more curry herb. This is the uh, blacky, I think, sweet potato, which is ornamental sweet potato. It doesn't form tubers, but I like to eat the leaves. They've got a bit of a mildly spicy sort of taste. And they're quite delicious. This is a whole heap of cuttings that have just dropped most of their leaves, but they're still alive. These are from a, uh, a mulberry tree I found in the bush. Uh, it had lots of big, juicy, sweet fruits. So I took a few branches home and I've made all these cuttings from them. Here's a few of the big ones in the pots. This one's definitely established itself. You see the new growth on the tips there. Another little macadamia seedling dug up from the tree at the back. This one's had a bit of, this one's been put in a bonsai pot. Had a bit of wire wrapped around it and we're uh, tormenting it a bit and trying to turn it into a bonsai, see how it goes. These are a couple of uh, pandan leaf in pots. These are used as a uh, flavouring for Asian desserts. This is uh, whole heap of aloe vera in pots, that one at the back's fallen over and that one too. I'll need to divide these up and that'll probably be shown in a video. A whole whole mess of dragon fruit cuttings in, in various containers and pots. That's some of them. Another one there growing off into the uh, garden bed. And a whole heap more over here. I really need to sort them out. Some of them were uh, red dragon fruit, some of them were white flesh dragon fruit, some of them were uh, yellow skinned and white flesh dragon fruit, they're the nicest, they're the sweetest. But uh, I've got no idea which is which now because it's been a few years since I planted them. This is a pot of cat grass I cut back at the end of winter. This one Miso's been enjoying quite a, quite a lot, she's been coming along nibbling the uh, fresh new growth on it. Tall plants in this bed are a native ginger and they have little edible blue fruit that tastes a bit like ginger. This little guy down here, well, there's a couple of them, they're uh, miracle fruit, grown from seeds. Long way till they're ready to produce fruit. 